Today, we will learn five practical cursor tips that will save you time and will turn you into an efficient developer. Most developers are only using a portion of cursor features, inline suggestions, chat, and agent. Watch this video till the end to expand your capabilities and learn about useful tips that can cut your development time. Tip number one is knowledge-based technique with cursor rules. That will reduce AI hallucinations. Hallucinations happen when the agent doesn't have enough context and is making certain assumptions that are not correct. To improve this, most efficient developers are building structured knowledge bases that transform how cursor understands their projects. Here is how it works. We create a set of core documentation files that serve as a knowledge base for Cursor's AI models, with the most important being the Cursor Rules file. This file lives in our project's root directory and provides project-specific instructions for the AI. GitHub repository called Awesome Cursor Rules has templates for almost every framework and language combination with rules for both front-end, back-end, and a ton of other use cases. For maximum effectiveness, we expand our knowledge base with additional documents. Project requirements document needs to outline what we are building. Project structure, it works like a Google map for the AI. Tech stack lists all technology choices, specific tools, frameworks, or languages, dependencies that you need. Implementation plan, is a step-by-step -step roadmap for building the app, specific technical guidelines, a user journey document that shows how users would interact with the application, and a decision or learnings log where you can ask Cursor to use this file to keep track of its learnings and decisions along the way. This technique is useful because it reduces the need to fix hallucinated code that doesn't work with our actual project. It helps us build complex applications with AI assistance in record time without the struggle of constant corrections. Another useful feature is user rules to customize the agent's behavior in relation to users. In cursor settings, we add global instructions that will be applied to every interaction, which is separate from project-specific cursor rules file. This creates a personalized AI assistant that matches our exact preferences. From the main window of your Cursor IDE, go to Settings, Cursor Settings. From there, navigate to the Rules section. Under User Rules, we can edit the instructions that will apply to all the chats. The agent is only as good as the context it has and the instructions we give it. When we follow these best practices, we ensure the agent has a complete picture of our project and it behaves exactly as we need it to. Tip number two is using different AI models for different tasks. Advanced cursor users are strategically using different models for different tasks, for example, Gemini Pro 2.5 to scan the code base, Sonnet 3.5 or 3.7 to execute the code, and sometimes GPT-4 for complex debugging. Each model has different strengths. Gemini Pro 2.5 has a massive context window. That means it can see more of our code at once, making it perfect for understanding large code bases. Sonnet models are fast and accurate for generating code, and GPT-4 has good reasoning skills for those really tricky debugging sessions. We have an option to switch models when we run out of requests for one provider, ensuring we never hit a productivity wall during a critical development session.
In the chat of your cursor, click on the model dropdown that may say Auto by default. Here, you can choose from available models. There are more models we can enable. We navigate to Settings, Cursor Settings, Models section. Here, you can see additional model options that we can enable. You can also explicitly add a missing model. So this strategy alone improves our results with Cursor and gives us the perfect balance of speed, accuracy, and context awareness. Tip number three is Cursor's Model Context Protocol Settings, or MCP settings. MCP is essentially a plugin system for Cursor that allows us to extend the AI's capabilities by connecting it to external systems and data sources. With MCP, we have an option to connect Cursor to our databases so it can query data directly to GitHub to create pull requests and branches, to things like Notion or Jira to read our project documentation and create tasks, Figma to transform designs into production-ready React components, and almost any other tool that you may have in your stack. MCP in Cursor eliminates context switching. Instead of constantly jumping between tools, we stay in our editor while the AI interacts with the entire development ecosystem. Setting up MCP is simple. We create a configuration file at that cursor slash mcp.json for project-specific tools. The most powerful part is that MCP servers can be written in any language that can print to standard output or serve as HTTP endpoint. This means we will be able to create custom tools using our preferred programming language in minutes, and this tip saves significant time. Right now, I'm in my cursor IDE. To add an MCP server, I'm going to go to my settings, cursor settings, and navigate to the MCP tab, where I can add a new global MCP server. Here, you can see that there is an mcp.json file. In this file, you will add configurations for all of the MCP servers that you want to add. An example of how this looks like is this. Here, you can see that we're adding a GitHub MCP server and indicating the commands for how it's run, um, where it also requires a GitHub personal access token to be connected to your account. This token you can get from your uh, GitHub profile under the personal tokens settings. After this configuration is added, we can see that we have a new GitHub MCP server added with a lot of tools available for use. To test it out, we can ask Cursor Chat to create a new GitHub repository, and it will use the new MCP server and the tools that are available through it to do it. We are doing it in plain English, and Cursor and MCP are collaborating to create the new repository for us without having to execute any CLI commands or going into the GitHub UI. The repository has been created and the MCP server has done its job. Tip number four is a set of features from Cursor's agent mode. Add open files to context command references files open in the editor. By typing slash in agent prompt, we instantly add all currently open files to the context. This is crucial for giving the agent the complete picture of what we are working on. I have three files open in my main cursor window. When I go to cursor chat and type slash, I can add open files to context. The commit command in our prompt instructs the agent to analyze uncommitted changes for bugs, security issues, or improvement opportunities. In cursor chat, typing at command brings up the commit option that we can select to specifically tell our prompt to work with the files that are different from our working state. 
Another powerful tool in Cursor is Parallel Apply. It allows the agent to make consistent changes across multiple files at the same time. We can use Command I and type the change we need. Traditionally, this would require manually tracking down every file and carefully updating each one. Large scale refactoring is one of the most error prone and time consuming tasks in development. And with Cursor, we can simply describe the refactoring we need. The agent will identify all affected files and make the changes consistently across all of them. This is especially powerful when we're working with design systems or API changes that affect dozens of files. Now you know this tip and can make changes to your code bases with confidence. Tip number five is resync code base index feature. It's a lifesaver when we're working on rapidly changing projects. In cursor settings, there is an option to manually resync the code base index. This is important when we are creating and deleting files frequently, especially when using scripts that generate code. Cursor's AI capabilities rely on an accurate understanding of your code base. So when files are added, removed, or significantly changed, the index can become outdated, which can lead to less accurate suggestions and more hallucinations. By regularly resyncing the index, we can be sure that Cursor always has the most up-to-date view of the project, resulting in more relevant and accurate assistance. This is especially important when working with code generation tools, build processes that output files, or when pulling major changes from a repository. Another useful thing we should do to stay ahead of the curve is turn on experimental features because you will get access to unique and often very powerful functionality that isn't available to others yet. New capabilities are being added regularly. In the settings, there is a section for experimental features that lets you access cutting edge functionality before it's released. Now you know useful cursor tips that save you time and make you more efficient. Here are the key points. These practical tips improve the quality of interactions with Cursor so that developers can focus on architecture and design. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Your reality has changed. You're stuck in your career. You're either using AI or being used. Do you still believe success is guaranteed? you feel it's time to wake up. Old strategies don't work anymore. Welcome to the real world. It will never be the same again. You need to fight for your future. Learn to spot truth from lies. I will help you. Together, we will win.